Next we go to the pump station, I mean compressor stations. The screen is divided into two parts. Compressor station data on top shows the distances or the locations of the three compressor stations, the compressor efficiency, mechanical efficiency, and an installed horsepower number. The lower section specifies the suction pressure, the discharge pressure, the maximum discharge temperature, the suction and discharge piping losses, and the fuel factor that is used to calculate the fuel consumption at the stations. Check this box and it will calculate the compressor fuel consumption. The thermal conductivity screen, you specify the depth of cover of the pipe, the soil conductivity, pipe conductivity, insulation conductivity, the insulation thickness, and the soil temperature. In this case, we have pretty much the same information throughout the pipeline. start calculation but before that let's go to options and look at the global parameters we have chosen a K ratio for the gas of 1.26 maximum gas velocity of 50 pipeline efficiency of 1 which is 100 percent choosing AGA turbulent and standing cats for the compressibility factor got base temperature of 60 degrees and base pressure of 14.7 click OK, start simulation and gives you a screen where you can take a look at the basis of calculation. Here's the project title, a case number, input file name and the output file name, the options for pressure drop and compressibility factor, calculate the compressor fuel consumption option and holding the del delivery pressure at the end of the pipeline click OK, start calculating and after a few seconds the results will be displayed on the screen as follows. The initial portion of the report shows the input data, the base temperature, the origin suction temperature, suction pressure, inlet flow rate of 150 million, the outlet flow rate is 137 million, the difference being the total fuel consumed at the three stations. We scroll over pipeline profile data, thermal conductivity and insulation data. Next section is locations and flow rates. And then the flow rates, pressures and temperatures under the compressor station. That shows the suction pressure, the discharge pressure, the compression ratio and so on. The next section shows the compressor station fuel consumption and the horsepower. The total fuel consumption is shown here. The next section shows the Reynolds number and heat transfer coefficient. And finally, the pipeline temperature and pressure profile. You can see the line pack volumes for all the points along the pipeline. The export button enables you to export the results to Windows Notepad or Microsoft Excel. The hydraulic gradient button allows you to display the pressure profile along the pipeline. It's pretty much completes the simulation of a typical natural gas pipeline. Let's talk a little bit about some of the other options. Under options you have a quick start option whereby specifying some basic pipeline data and gas properties gas model quickly create the pipeline model. You can then review the various screens and make changes as needed and click the calculate button to simulate. So in this case, we're going to start off with an English units. Distance will be in miles, flow rate in millions of cubic feet a day. 
and let's specify the name of the pipeline as sample pipeline 2010-1 we'll say it's a 100 mile pipeline it's gonna build the model every 10 mile increment starting elevation is 100 a 20 inch outside diameter half inch wall thickness MAOP of 1440 We'll simulate a 200 million cubic feet a day flow rate of this gravity and viscosity and assume the inlet temperature of the gas is at 60 degrees and let's say we have two compressor stations with a minimum suction pressure of 800 and a discharge pressure of 1400 and we'll limit the discharge temperature to 140. The terminus delivery pressure would be 800. We click OK and the pipeline model has been created. The important thing is to review the compressor station and gas flow rate screens before running the model. So there it is. It's created the 100 mile pipeline and next you can go through the various screens such as the flow rate screen and the station screen and then make changes as needed to finally simulate this particular pipeline model. The How Do I screen gives you an option of looking at the various operations that can be done to specify a valve station, plotting the hydraulic gradient, creating a pipe loop file, and so on. This completes the simulation part. Next we'll talk about the availability and pricing of the software. The software pricing may be a lease option or a purchase option. The lease option includes six months lease at 895 US dollars, which includes 60 days of technical support, a 12 month lease for 1695, including 90 days of technical support. The purchase option includes a three year license for 3995 dollars with 90 days of technical support and a three-year license of $49.95 per license including 12 months of technical support. Additional software maintenance and technical support may be purchased at $9.95 per license copy. The SMTS includes free program updates along with email and phone support. This concludes this tutorial video. Thank you very much.